All right, guys, we're going to try to keep this one quick. This first page we'll fill out later. In this second page, we'll go over some of the basics of electric potential energy and voltage. Don't get those confused. Potential energy is <clears throat> for a conservative force like gravity or electric field. The amount of energy um, is equal to the amount of energy stored up in the field or released by the field is uh, related to the amount of work required to move something from one point to another against the conservative field or with it. We say against, but it could be in the same direction. And uh, if I'm moving a, like a, a, a mass up or down gravitationally, the I'm pushing up on a mass. Whether I move the mass up or whether I lower the mass down, I need to provide an upward force to counter the force of gravity. And so an external force against a conservative field is the opposite of the field force itself. Gravity pulls down. I need to push up. That's where this negative comes in. And so the amount of work that I do to move a charge from one point to another is the opposite of the work that the field does, the opposite of the work that the conservative force does. If you think about when, when I raise a mass up, I'm pushing up and the object moves up and that's positive work and we see that as an increase in potential energy as a mass moves upwards. But that's negative of the work that gravity did, right? Gravity was pulling down, the mass was moving up. So here it's, it's more convenient to use the negative of the work done by the electric field because we actually have an equation for the work or for the force of the electric field. The zero point for potential energy is defined at infinity. This is uh, just a standard thing in all of uh, E&M, so that's always going to be the case. You're never going to be choosing the zero level for potential energy. It's always going to be at infinity. And if we want the uh, external work to bring together two point charges, it's the negative integral of FDR. This is a force times distance, which is work, right? And we're taking the negative because this would represent the force of the external source, the, the force that I need to put onto it to move it from one point to another, whether I push or pull. But the amount that I push or pull is in the opposite direction of the electric force and it's of the same magnitude. So when you carry out this integration, you get a nice simple result, KQQ over R. If the two charges are positive or negative, if they have the same sign, right? If Q and Q are the same, both positive or both negative, then this entire work term, this entire energy term becomes positive. And that should make sense because if you're bringing in two positive charges together, they want to repel each other. So you have to push them together and you're moving them together. So you're pushing in the direction of motion that's positive work. If you're bringing together a positive and a negative charge, so if Q has the, if these two Qs have opposite signs, then the charges want to attract and you're going to be holding them back, but they're going to be moving together. And then you're pulling in the opposite direction that they're moving. And this would be negative if the uh, two Qs were opposite signs. It's a uh, simple result then to show that uh, the change in potential energy from A to B, from spot A to spot B, is just uh, the energy at B subtracted from, uh, sorry, the energy at A subtracted from the energy at B, right? If you're going from A to B, B is your final position, A is your starting position. And delta always means final minus start. For the electric potential difference, 
or just electric potential or potential difference. Voltage is what we mean by that. I'm sorry, there's so many confusing terms. Not my fault. Voltage is, I think, the easiest way of saying it, but you will see those other ones. Don't confuse this with uh, potential energy. The uh, positive charges are going to want to move to areas of lower voltage, just like um, gravity wants to pull a mass down to a lower height. But a negative charge wants to go to an area of higher voltage. And you can think of that as like a balloon, a helium balloon wanting to go to an area of higher elevation, right? So a positive mass would, or a positive charge would be like uh, a mass that wants to fall down under the influence of gravity with the gravitational field, right? Positive was defined to be the direction the uh, electric field goes with a positive charge. So a negative charge is gonna go in the opposite direction of the electric field, and that's gonna move it to an area of higher voltage. Energy per unit charge is voltage, so if you take voltage and multiply it by charge, you get energy. You could also divide this right here and get voltage as U over Q. The change in voltage from A to B is the change in electric energy divided by charge, right? Energy per unit charge. And that when you look at the integral of uh, energy, that was related to the dot product of force and uh, displacement. But force divided by charge right here is electric field. That's what electric field was. It was the force per unit charge. So to find voltage difference, you can really just integrate the electric field if you need to. And just like U equaled QV, delta U equals Q delta V. If you're going to move a positive charge to a higher voltage, we're going from 3.2 volts up to 8.7 volts, that's going to require positive external work. The work required is going to be equal to the change in uh, potential energy. So plug in the numbers, make sure you get that result. We'll get two special cases here. One special case is for a point charge. Uh, for a point charge, and you can't have a voltage with just a point charge, right? To have energy, you need to have two charges. To have voltage, you can just have one. So every charge has its own uh, voltage function for any distance away from it. And the voltage from a point charge is just going to be kq over r. You can see that from uh, here. The electric field of a point charge was kq over r squared. And when you integrate kq over r squared, you're going to get kq over r, and the negatives uh, work themselves out there. So kq over r, that would tell you the voltage from a charge q at some distance r, right? voltage at distance r. Another special case is when the electric field is uniform. If the electric field is uniform, then this can get factored out, essentially. And the integral of dr, then, if the electric field's constant, the integral of dr is just the distance that you have moved. So when you have a uniform electric field, the change in voltage is the magnitude of the electric field times the distance that you moved. Or you could say that the electric field is voltage divided by distance. This is all best worked out using magnitudes and thinking about directions separately. Like, are you moving up the electric field or down the electric field? If you're moving against the electric field, you're moving to a higher voltage. If you're moving with the electric field, you're moving to a lower voltage. So that's how you know whether delta V would be positive or negative. Many times, it doesn't really matter whether delta V is positive or negative because we're looking for the magnitude. 
and D is the distance that you've moved parallel to the field. If you move per perpendicular to the field, then this dot product right here, this dot product would be zero if you move perpendicular to the field. And when you move parallel to the field, you know in a dot product there's a cosine of theta involved. So, <coughs> so if you're moving parallel to the field, theta is either going to be zero or 180. And that would only affect whether this is positive or negative, but we're dealing in absolute values here. So we don't need to be concerned whether theta is uh, zero or 180, but you got to have a distance parallel to the field. So what is the electric field between two large parallel plates that are connected to a battery? Well, this is what it might look like, right? Two parallel plates, the negative side of the battery, we would take that to be zero volts, the positive side, 1.5 volts. This zero volt bit is really just uh, kind of a reference point. It's not important that this is zero and that's 1.5. What's important is that they are 1.5 different than each other. So this could well be 10 and 11.5 or negative three and negative 1.5, right? As long as one's 1.5 higher than the other, that's fine. So you're going to finish this one off, plug in, show your work there.